Good afternoon everyone, thank you for joining. Hi, I'm Darshan Pita and let's talk about AI RRM and the purpose behind it. So as we all know, the purpose and the use of AI RRM has been great, but what it is, right? Let's try to understand. So our expectation when we go into office or the students going to their dorms or university or in a hospital environment, the expectation is it should be as simple as that we can plug it at home and have that great experience. You can access, browse, network, look into your favorite information or applications. Well, it shouldn't be the same or it should be the same when you go to that workplace or certain expectation is to have that same experience. But the problems that we know about from the technical side, it requires precise RF tuning by experts. You should be able to control the environment in the terms of what type of clients are going to be used. And you should not have those random disconnects and should is not always possible. So what is possible in a real world environment that we can't control things that which are not in our control, depending upon the types of devices that are going to show up in a university scenario or patients bringing their own devices. So we need to have that our RF environment better that we can make it the user experience more dynamic and useful. So let's get into that. One of the customer that I went to for a university and their IT team was sitting in an open floor concept. And it is a multi-tenant facility where other users were there, other companies were located and they had their three floors. Due to aesthetics, we would love to have the charts that showing below for the radios to go ahead and have their potential power and clients connected to those environment in a triangulation format so that they can have the best radio coverage and connectivity. While the reality is, as you can see on the top, they were in a row and aesthetic police or aesthetic reasons or the limitation that we can't go ahead and make those changes. And at that time, what we are dependent on is RF tuning. And it is more about changing your minimum data rate. That is the first step that you begin with and then transmission power control channels that you're allowing no DFS and then you also look into dynamic bandwidth selection. All that RF tuning at one location, it took days to precisely optimize the network. And then we went into other dorms and the dorms were of the different construction going all the way back of the construction of the 120 years back to the latest one. And in all of that, even the stone plate APs that we have like 1810 or 9105, which were either they were back to back in a drywall or they were located at the different location in each dorm room. And that's what the example brings into different dorms it required humongous amount of time to go ahead and tune it. So let's try to understand, is there a way that we can make that kind of experience along with the hospitals that we have, how can we make their experience better? Or going back to enterprise environment or commercial environment, overall, what can be done to reduce that human interaction and that to of the best performance and the best user experience can be provided? Let's take a look. So what does the radio resource management provides? So it provides overall optimum, optimize the wireless configuration to improve wireless performance. 
The first is FRA and it was highly used during our 2800, 3800, 4800 environment along with our 9130s, 20s and now latest 6 cx modern 9166 as well. So the first is that one and then transmission power control. What is the minimum power control and what is the maximize? Each environment should be different. 2.4 gigahertz versus 5 gigahertz. Dynamic channel assignment. What should be done? And bandwidth selection. So stay tuned and let's start to understand how can we configure it and what can each data provide. So in order to do that, let's take a look into the first and foremost thing that the code version that is recommended if you're watching this video at this time on 9800 wireless controller is 1794 and 2.3.5.3 is for DNA center. As of today, in order to run AIRM, you require DNA center and you have to provision through DNA center your environment and it will be different in coming months. So for 9800 wireless controller, first and foremost is go ahead and enable that APFRA for your, for your APs that are capable of it and then revert all auto because we will want our AIRM profile to take care of it. Now let's take a look into DNA Center, what we need to do. So let's take a look at the DNA Center, how we can go ahead and configure AI profile. So always trying to go ahead and figure it out the most and the easiest way is going to Hamburger Manning and going to Assurance and then AIRM. So AIRM runs per building, which will make sense that you will like your entire building to have that AIRM profile because the same RF profile needs to be applied. So at this building, which has already been running, as we can see at the blue color over here, which is AIRM has been provisioned. So this has been configured, but let's take a look what do we need to do in order to create that? So there are a few ways that can be done. The one that we will can go back and take a look into network settings and taking a look into under wireless. So over here, if you already have your existing RF profile and AI RF profile, so for example, if you have created it and running it, what will be the best way to do is select that, go into the action, and you can go ahead and say, upgrade to AI, which is the best and the easiest way to do it. Upgrade to AI, you said yes, and take a look into what configuration that you need to do. So in our scenario, we would like to have 2.4, 5 and 6 gigahertz. BZ hours for our scenario, we would like to have it from 9 till 17 hours. And then FRA, you want to keep it for 2.4 and 5. 6 will be available in the near future for your 6 gigahertz based on what APs that you have in environment. Dynamic channel assignment that you want, bandwidth selection that you want, and transmission power control. Now, coming over here, the tuning depends upon 2.4, 5, and 6 gigahertz. I highly recommend to have zero weight DFS. It provides the backup for a Uni2 channel that is capable to go ahead and have that backup channel in case of the DFS channel or radar being detected on it. So, and here you can maximize Configuration. So configuration point of view, it depends what's the right, what's the best for your environment that you can set it up over here. You can still leave it at default and that is okay. It will optimize and provide you those recommendation as well. 
for me i would like to have it a little bit somewhere concrete that from 8 to 23 instead of 8 to 14 dbm for example and you can put your rxs or ps auto as well you can quickly save that once you save it that ai rf profile has been created and will show up in your new rf profile but ai rf profile in meantime let's go back okay let's take a look into our ai rf profile so previously we have the two rf profile that is being currently used as first try ai rm and we made few changes and added it that and created a new one this one previously we watched it was central rf and now a new rf profile ai rf profile that has been created rm central rf now let's go back into assurance and then look into ai rm so as simple as going into an rf profile have the best one that you have already configured it and then create that RF profile and convert into AI RF profile. So at the site level, we have buildings and the buildings, this is already configured. Let's try to take a look. This is a new building, nothing is being created. This is just for the purpose of how you can do it. So assign RF profile, you can go ahead and say AI RF for the task name and then under hierarchy you have to a choice of being selecting and then select next simple as that a new RF so I asked you that you can go back and take a look and create a new RF profile into going into the network settings your existing RF profile and do that. If you do not want to do that, you can directly come into assurance, going into an AI RF profile, the steps that we started. And if you want to have the new one, you can create over here a new AI RF profile or copy current RF profile. And that is an ease of doing that. I would love to do it in this way instead of going back creating it and following that so once we select it select next and follow and apply that for the sake of it there are no ap's in the buildings that is being assigned to this new building one so we will go ahead we can review it and click next for our purpose we will exit this one so once it has been applied, what it will show is we will go back into assurance into the existing AI RM that has been created and applied. So under this residence, AI RM has been applied. It will show you the information of number of APs, the changes that has been applied, FRA changes that has gone into it, how many monitor mode APs, how many monitor mode radios are there, 2.4 versus 5 gigahertz radios, and overall performance, core channel interference. This gives you a confidence that whether you are going in the right direction or not. And also provides you an AP spectral density to show that if you are having enough APs in the environment, or is there a way that you need to go ahead and add more APs? It will more likely over here, less than five APs in a high density environment or a regular environment, you take a look, and then you can go ahead and try to understand its trend, which are those. You can also look into the details around it, why is it happening? What are the details around it? 
So it provides overall ease of doing that, but it doesn't end there, right? If you want to go ahead and make a change, for example, I was working with one of my customer and there was a recommendation that for your five gigahertz, you should be moving from your 20 megahertz to 40 megahertz. And that was shown over here under insights. So you can follow that and make changes or you want to run the simulation. So create a simulation that instead of 40 megahertz, you want to go ahead and move it to 20 megahertz of your existing AI RRM RF profile, which is assigned to this building and you can run that simulation. So over the time that simulation will run and provide that recommendation whether you should go ahead and make those changes in the terms of what the performance looks like as of today and what it will look like for the future. And it also provides the details about the changes that you have made. And you can compare that, hey, let's go ahead and compare that from 20 megahertz is what the new change that you want and this is the old one that you have. So optimized radio that will look like with the RF changes, since this is a limited environment, you won't be able to see that much. But in a real world environment, we were able to see that changes. And then you can simply upgrade AI RF profile. You do not have to go ahead and provision your environment, go ahead, make any changes. You just have to go ahead and apply this. And after applying that, you can go back into environment, go into your access points, and you will be able to see that change in a name. For example, if you have applied, it will start showing up in an RF tags that gives you confidence that, hey, that is right, that the changes has directly been applied. So stay tuned and make sure you use the latest and the greatest AI RRM, which will reduce your overall operations time, designing time, and make the user experience better. So we'll bring up more information very soon. Thank you.